the last couple of weeks have been pretty uh, active, confusing, and a little bit scary for our investors, which is completely understood. I wanted to take a couple of minutes to visit with you about uh, what's going on in the markets, the coronavirus, the scare of the last couple of weeks. And specifically, I wanted to visit about six points. Uh, your statements that will be coming in the mail soon. Uh, not panicking and keeping a cool head. Facts around the coronavirus and hopefully dispel a couple of myths. The role of the media. The market corrections and maybe some perspective on past market corrections. And then lastly, want to speak generally about your investment portfolios and strategies and how those may be affected and opportunities. First and foremost, let's talk for just a second about your statements that will be coming in the mail. Those will be coming out probably in the next few days. The timing of those statements couldn't have been worse, so I want you to be prepared for those. Uh, although most of you aren't entirely invested in the market, your statements are still going to be down and the last couple of weeks, which just happened to be the cutoff for this month's statement, will be reflected on there. So if you have questions or any concerns on those statements, please give us a call. On the subject of overreaction and not panicking, it's important to remember that in times of a sell-off, at least historically, it's not made sense ever to panic and take action without thought. So we wanna be very thoughtful. We wanna to try to put things in perspective and just remember that if the world doesn't end, which we don't believe that it will, we have sound investment strategies. We have sound investment portfolios. We make decisions on a regular basis. And this is not the time for an overreaction or a panic that will not be beneficial to anyone's future or any of you, our clients. So let's talk about facts around the coronavirus and the common flu and maybe a couple of myths that we, maybe we could dispel. The coronavirus, as you know, has created panic and fear, mostly driven by politicians and the media uh, sensationalizing and hyping. It's not that it's not a serious issue that needs to be um, organized around, taken care of, but at any rate, it is being overblown. I'm not a doctor, and I did stay at a Holiday Inn, but I'm not a doctor, but many of our clients are and our friends are. We'll share up on the screen, but I checked to make sure this was a credible source that, that they felt, doctors felt that this was a credible source. You'll see on the slide that about 29 million people so far this year have come down with the common flu. And of that number, 280,000 plus have been hospitalized and over 16,000 people in the United States have passed away from the common flu. So these things aren't unnormal. Unfortunately, they're a way of life and they affect most our youngest population and our elderly population. And I assume that this too will run its course with the coronavirus, but I think we need to put that into perspective because to listen to the media, it sounds really gloom and doom that tens of millions of people could pass away. And hopefully that won't be the case. So how about a little perspective on past corrections in the markets, pandemics, crisis, recessions. Any of you know that this happens. This time it's been very swift in the matter of a week or two. We're down more than 10% and that's pretty swift and pretty quick and it gets our attention. But many of you have been our clients for years and some of you even for decades and you know these things happen. We all, and I'll include myself, know the history. We've been through it with our investments, the psychology of downturns, but we're all human, including myself, and we tend to focus on what's causing us the most pain right now and have a hard time putting into context past events in our money. And we just need to take a step back. I would encourage you all and myself to take a step back and look at those past uh, things that have happened that we've been through. If you've been our client for any amount of time at all, including the last years or the last two decades, we've been through a SARS epidemic. We've been through a bird flu epidemic. We've been through a measles scare. 
swine flu, Ebola, they all had immediate reactions. The market all had immediate reaction in a negative way to those events. We've been through the 9-11 attacks and the uh, the wars and the conflicts that followed that for years. We've been through the tech crash in 2000 through 2002. We've been through the 07 and 08 financial crisis that had lingering effects for years and years and years. And then more recently in 2015 and 16, there was a period during each one of those years where we had negative 10% plus quick downturns and recovered. Uh, and hopefully that's always the case. It has been in the past. And then in 2018, in the last quarter, uh, October, November, and December, if you'll remember, we just came a few uh, one-tenths of a percent short of a 20% correction over a matter of three months. So these things, although part painful sometimes, are part of being an investor and they happen on a regular basis. We just kind of forget to put them in context because we focus on what's causing us the most pain now. And myself is included in that. So what about the role of the media? It, and I won't um, dwell on this too much because it's something we talk about on a regular basis. But I just want to remind everyone at a time, especially like this, that the role of the media is truly not that they're looking out for us, not that they're offering us education and helping with investment decisions. Their role is to scare, incite fear, because that keeps our eyes glued to the channel and viewers equal ratings equal more revenue from advertisers on those channels. It's not that they can't share some good information. It's not that there can't be good information and host and speakers on those, but we have to have an internal filter to be able to digest that and look through it and not just have a knee-jerk reaction of being overwhelmed and panicked from those broadcasts. Lastly on the media, it's important to remember that they are focused on a very short period of time, days, hours, or even minutes. And you as an investor with goals, dreams, and ambition, and us serving you as our investor, we're focusing on goals that you have five, 10, 20 years from now to send kids to college, send grandkids to college, uh, get you to retirement, help you achieve your vacation dreams in retirement. Those are all things that you're likely not going to need to accomplish tomorrow or next week. If you did need to accomplish those tomorrow or next week, we would have already set the cash aside or you would have already set the cash aside in your savings account for those goals. Lastly, I wanted to speak on the topic of investment portfolios and investment strategies. Now, each one of you, our clients, is unique. That's one of the great things about being an independent advisor and serving you as our clients is we truly work with each one of you on an individual basis to develop strategies and implement investment portfolios that are appropriate for you, your situation, and your family. So I'm going to generalize here, but just remember that everybody, each one of you are unique in your portfolios and your situations. What each one of our clients share in common is that we have a well thought out investment strategy and plan. We're not taking any unnecessary risk. There's always gonna be risk in investing, but we're trying to minimize or mitigate the risk to the extent possible. So we're never fully invested in the stock market like the numbers reflect on TV showing how much the Dow or how much the S&P is down for the day. Just remember, in most of your situations, we're not fully invested in the market, especially if you're nearing or in retirement. So that's something to keep in mind when you're watching those. The other thing is we are closely monitoring your situation, your investment strategy. We're flexible. We're always looking at your portfolios and making decisions with you in advance, planning. We can't predict the future but we can plan for the future. And so those are things that are always going on in your portfolio and your situation. It's also important to remember that we're not trying to beat the market because we are prudent with our clients with your money. We strive to always achieve a reasonable return with a reasonable risk level. And so 
I think this serves as a reminder this last week or two of why we build balanced portfolios, of why maybe we don't have all the money invested in the market. Because as recently as 2019, investors were looking at their returns and wondering, well, all the indexes in the market got somewhere between a 20 and 30% return. Maybe I got 15, 18, or 20. Why? Well, we don't have all the money invested in the market. And this is a reminder of why. You need to be flexible. You need to be consistent. We don't need to try to hit home runs. And sometimes that can frustrate investors and even myself when the sky's the limit and it seems like the market will go up forever and the trees will truly grow to the sky. But we all know that doesn't happen. And by building balanced portfolios, by being involved with you in building those portfolios, by being conservative in nature, it helps mitigate some of the downside that your portfolio may experience. Now that doesn't mean your portfolio doesn't go down. That doesn't mean you're gonna like your statement that comes out in the next week. But what it does mean is that it's not always about how much you make, it's also about how much you lose. So the takeaway that I have from this whole thing these last couple of weeks is this is, serves as such a good reminder of why we build balanced portfolios and why we're not trying to beat the market. We're trying to help you reach your goals, dreams, and ambitions, not beat the market. In conclusion, a couple of things. We will get through this. This too shall pass unless the world ends. And I don't know about you, but I hope the world doesn't end. I hope to stick around for a little bit and grow investment portfolios and, and help you, our clients. So this too shall pass. The other thing is on the subject of, of keeping cash in the accounts, uh, keeping some other type of uh, investments in your accounts that aren't directly invested in the stock market. It not only serves as a, a buffer for when the markets go down and hopefully mitigate some of the downside, it also can be very opportunistic depending on your situation. It's not going to be the right time for everybody to invest, but these can present opportunities that in the past anyway, we've been able to take advantage of by buying lower and hopefully uh, recognize the fruits of some of those um, investments. So it's kind of a, a twofold opportunity here. Number one, hopefully we'll mitigate some of the downside and help with that. And number two, it may present some opportunities. And if any of you have any questions on any of what we've talked about, any opportunities that might be uh, that might make sense for you personally, for you and your family, please feel free to reach out to myself. Uh, the team, and we'll meet with you. We'll talk with you on the phone. If you just need someone to talk to, a voice of reason in a world of talking heads on the TV, and you just need someone to, to cry on the shoulder or talk to, that's what we're here for. That's what you're paying us for, is to, to get you through those things. So please know uh, we're never too busy. It's a busy time, but we're never too busy to take care of you, our clients. So just give us a holler.